Disc brakes on road bikes are now coming on virtually all different manufacturers of bikes. And why? Well, they provide fantastic braking in all different weather conditions. However, they do require different maintenance methods compared to rim brakes. So let's look at five ways on how you should be maintaining yours. Do not brake, at least not without a rotor inside of the caliper of the bike. But why exactly? Well, you actually risk the pistons popping out of the caliper, and that is a messy old job, believe me. But why would that happen, you may ask? Well, the pads are actually self-centering inside of the caliper, and that's because the rotor is doing the job of fooling the pads into thinking that they're in the center. So if there's no rotor in there, the pads, they just keep moving further inwards until eventually they fall out possibly, which like I say, is a messy job. So if you have found yourself squeezing that brake lever without a rotor in there, don't worry, just don't keep on doing it. Instead, get yourself possibly a tire lever, so something like this, or maybe even a flathead screwdriver, although you do run the risk of scoring the pad slightly, pop it in between the pads and just push them back into place. It might take a little bit of effort, but it's more than worth it because once you refit the wheel, tighten it up, then you simply pull on that lever a few times and those pads are back centered again. So for traveling, I would advise actually putting something in between the pads or in between the pistons here inside of the calipers to prevent a lever from possibly being accidentally squeezed or levered inside of your bag or case. You can buy special plastic blocks for that, or in fact, people do make their own versions. A little hack or a bodge goes a long way. With a traditional cabled setup of brakes, we'd normally replace the inner and outer cables to either rejuvenate or bring back to life the braking performance. But what would we do then on a hydraulic setup? We bleed the system. But how do you know when you need to bleed your brakes? Well, it's either when the braking becomes squishy or spongy and you don't quite have that same braking performance. But why does that happen exactly? Well, it's very likely that your brakes have actually had some air find its way into the system, which means that the brake fluid isn't doing its usual really good job of basically compressing the pads onto your rotors. So in order to bleed the brakes, essentially what you're doing is flushing out that contaminated brake fluid and replacing it with clean, fresh, good stuff. Importantly, air bubble free, because that's what gives you that squishy feeling. Just like a rim or standard pads, your disc brake rotors and pads do need taking care of. Now contamination, it can often be detected firstly by a really loud screeching braking sound when you're pulling on those levers, or alternatively, just really poor braking. In the worst case scenario, you could in fact have total brake failure, which is never good, is it, let's face it. Ways to avoid this then. Well, first of all, you wanna make sure that your rotors and pads don't get covered from anything from an aerosol can. So, believe it or not, tiny little particles could float through the air and land on them, giving you that contamination that you really don't want. So, when you are using anything from a can, I would always cover up the rotors and calipers using either a bit of plastic, some shop towel, or an old T-shirt, anything like that. My preferred method actually when applying anything onto a bike is always out of a bottle, I just prefer it. It's a little bit more precise. But when it comes to cleaning, uh, go ahead and use your traditional bike cleaning products. They're absolutely fine for disc brakes. And in fact, get yourself some disc brake cleaner. It does work wonders. Now, if you do find yourself with some contaminated components, you need to remove that as soon as possible, don't we? So use some isopropyl alcohol on a clean rag just to remove it, or you could in fact use some emery cloth. And whilst doing so, make sure you use some disposable gloves too, because the natural oils from your hands can in fact get on those components and cause further contamination. 
Now there isn't much room for error when it comes to disc brake rotors and their spacing around the pads because those tolerances are pretty fine indeed. So they do need a little bit of taking care of when removing and transporting because a little knock can in fact warp or bend that rotor slightly. So you can in fact bend them back into shape very carefully using special tools but if it's too far gone well you are going to need to put a new one on there because that's going to give you the best braking. Alternatively, your brake rotor could in fact be rubbing because the caliper is just slightly out of line on the mount. How are we going to solve that then? Well, you're going to undo the bolts a fraction and then pull on the brake in question and then tighten those bolts back up to torque. By doing so, you're actually going to have been realigning that caliper into the correct place. So give it a go, spin it and it should be now spot on, providing of course that rotor is not warped in any way. Now disc brake pads, just like rim brake pads, don't work to their full effect when they're brand new because they have a very slight glaze or slight shiny layer to them and in fact that needs to just be kind of scrubbed off. So the best way of doing this from my own experience is to ride along between 10 and 15 miles per hour then pull the brake in question enough to pull you to quite a sharp stop but not enough that you're going to pull a skid or go over the bars anything like that and also not enough that you're going to come to a complete standstill you want to be i guess at a very slow walking pace and then repeat that process about 15 times and then you're not quite done just yet because you want to do it again at a slightly higher speed this time about 20 miles per hour Again, repeating that same process about 15 times. What you're doing there is actually bedding the pads into the rotor and kind of vice versa as well to give you that better braking performance. So there we are, five ways of maintaining your disc brake so you still get peak performance. But as ever, let me know how you maintain yours down there in the comment section below. I'm keen to find out. And remember too to like and share this video with a friend. Give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com where we have a whole heap of goodies. And now for the latest GCN tech show, how about clicking just over here?